everybody, and welcome back to another episode of, of Library of Ruinia, where we, we just, in the last episode, we just watched the, what was the group called, the index song, one, some important group of, of, like, the fingers got bossed around by some dog woman, and forced against their will to come to our library, and died by our hands because of it. Yeah, and we're going to be continuing on with the plot in the meantime, but for the moment I did the usual off-screen stuff. I burned some books, I think maybe I upgraded my characters, or so the loadout is looking along the lines of like this. Speaking of which, another thing is I learned how to use passive if passive attributions here to set my character up, so I'll be be showing off my character loadout. Oh, it's here. Or of course, I'm going to be playing with it. It's and adjusting things accordingly, but I'm just showing what what I got at the moment. But for now, so let's go into the next thing that I've been deliberately saving for this particular part. Let's get into the next part of the story. Another thing I want to point out, but I don't know if I already mentioned this, but apparently the whole, what were they called, the carnival thing? The guys, the weirdo, the monster guys? These or so that, was that were, that had some weird or obsession with making, making fabrics and they talk, talked with like constant inflections? Question marks? Because they weren't related to the weird circus guys from the first game. According to comments, that was my mistake. Anyway, salutations everyone. Let us begin with today's worship session. It appears that we have a new worshipper. What concerns have you brought here to our oratory? I don't think I can continue living in the city anymore. It's too much for me. What could have overwhelmed you so much? Everything is so dreary, and so is my life. I wake up at 6 in the morning, get to work, go to work by 8, do the same work with the same face every single day. By the time I leave work, it's already 10 in the evening. I'm not sure her, what I'm doing anymore. I have so many expenses to cover every single month, I can't seem to get any richer. Everyone I see during my commute has the same face. I don't see why we work, we, why we earn money, or why we live. I feel like I lost my goal, my purpose. I'm just like a cogwheel. Yeah, I really am. I'm living like a cog in the machine. Even if I were gone, the city would soon find another cog to replace me. What am I, where, what does my worth lie? I understand that feeling. Everyone in the city is like a gear spinning along without a purpose. Staying in the middle of it, it wears you out slowly. You're right, I really feel like that. However, is it really necessarily a bad thing to be a gear? Huh? All problems stem from the refusal to admit it to the fact that we are indeed gears ourselves. I did too, once. After my father passed away, I lost my way for a while. You see, my father lived his life akin to a gear wheel. He'd always wake up at the same hour, go to the same place, and come home at the same time with the same face. My father did research on gears. His goal was to solve the same type of problems you're going through. Perhaps he unknowingly grew to resemble the single object he studied for so long. The wrinkles on his forehead deepened as he worked. They resembled the teeth of a gear. My father lived out his whole life as a rustic gear of the city until he was murdered by someone else. Oh! Then one day, I came across a thought. Maybe, really, maybe we really are gears that constitute the city. Maybe our suffering comes from trying to deny our own identity. 
What kind of life? But that kind of life is pointless. I'm tired of being a purpose cog that keeps running day by day. Exactly. The problem is that you see yourself as an aimless gear. You mean gears can have a purpose? Yes, of course they can. All we need to do is find the purpose we were born to mesh with. You shall become a unique gear that cannot be replaced by any other. We are all gears. There are simply so many gears in this world wallowing in sadness, but they have yet to know where and how to be. That's... It's still hard to believe that. Take a look at all the people gathered here. Do they have the same faces as the ones you've seen in your everyday life? No. They all look happy. Please, trust in me. Yes, this is the only way I have. Now, come up here. I'll give you the purpose in life you're looking for. Do I don't like where this is going. Do I sit in this chair? Yes. Take a seat and relax. This chair will tell you what kind of gear you are. Why well, do I have the feeling it's going to... Uh, horrifically maim him? And that's one of the better case scenarios. Is this really safe? Of course it is. Oh my, you have turned out to be a thought gear. A thought gear? It is exceedingly rare for one to bestow the purpose of a thought gear. You see, they are helping me even now. For your information, my father was also a thought gear. That means those gears in the back of your head are... This is... This one is my father. He always provides me with his wisdom about life. Besides, meat gears need to keep company with at least one thought gear. What? I'm getting to get the feeling that she's literally turning human beings into metal gears. But considering how screwed up the world is and all the kinds of crazy, wacky the abnormalities and stuff, of an borderline magic that that entities and abnormalities seem to uh, possess. I like, get the feeling that she's creating a. This woman is creating a cult around gears to lure people in, and because you know how cults always work, or they always prey off of 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 lonely, isolated people uh, uh, that are, are feeling worn down and hurt from either or bad situations like a bad family life or just generally bad time in their life like they, like death of a loved one or so. They take advantage of uh, people like that in bad situations isolate them from their friends and family and other loved ones and then recruit them into the cults. But, and then, but, like, but considering this is like lobotomy corpse slash library ruin you, that it goes a step beyond and she's like turning them into literal gears or so to like make herself stronger. But wait, am I really going to turn into a gear? The pain is only temporary. Then we followed with pure fulfillment. Everyone, let us welcome the honorable and invaluable arrival of a new thought. Wait, wait! I didn't know this would happen. As the, as the, oh my God, they really are turning him into a literal gear. It's really screwed up. As the gears turn. So too does life fulfill its cycle. Full stop fixer, Tamaki. So that's Eileen, cult leader of the, the Church of Gears. I've seen all kinds of gears in my life, but thought gears are new to me. This must be the rumored ritual of theirs. 
They get smarter by plugging gears into the back of their heads, apparently. That's a load of horse shit. Alright, let's see. Director Yu Jin from the Xi Association asks us to kill Ten Worship Church, neutralize its leader, and secure her. Wait, why do you have to specifically kill Ten? That's like kind of a weird number to fixate on. Like, are there only 10? Is there like a small amount, like 15 to 20? So you're like, so killing 10 is like killing a majority of them or something? Like, that's just kind of weird. Anyway, I don't quite, you'd expect the director of Xi Association Sector 2 to personally give a officer a request. Something strange must be up. How long are we gonna sit and watch that? Can we start shooting now? Wait for my sign. Ah, what a beautiful thought gear you have become. I will give you the honor of accompanying me. <laughs> Actually added a gear to her little model here, I noticed that. I bet the bigger one and was her father. You shall soon understand how happy it is to be a gear with a purpose. Yes, it may take some time to adjust. Let us start with turning bit by bit. Good. Along with the others, gently rotate. One cycle at a time. My father would gladly help you out. See? It does make you feel happy, doesn't it? I am very glad to know you are happy. My dear followers, today another lost gear has found its way to happiness. Praise be to Father. Praise be! Huh? What do you mean? Be careful. Now! What's going on? The gears. The poor... Oh, I'm oh, sorry, Rock. The gears. The poor gears. Please don't do this. Whoever you are, please leave us alone. We simply... We simply want to... Have a life. Be following our destined purposes. Gah! Why is her, her silvery leader so hard to hit? She doesn't seem to be dodging the bolts with her own reflexes. Is this someone else's? Something else is predicting the trajectories for her. her. Those thought gears on her head are spinning like crazy. Damn it! This sucks. We paid an arm and a leg for these bullets. Tamaki, you think we could read the movement pattern? into the, those gears. I don't understand what the movement patterns on, of the gears on her head have to do with anything. Can't do. Gah. Graced her shoulder. I'll finish her off. Wait, did you say that you wanted to like capture her? I know neutralize these can mean anything. Thing, but still, I thought you said you wanted a leader. A bullet crafted by the Atelier logic. Why does the expensive bullets you have there don't you friends? The blue rever reverberation. You are ah. Uh, could you be the person my father always talked? My, my father always talked about. Hmm. I guess. Say, I need you right now. Would you like to come with me? Yes, of course. I've been waiting for you my whole life. A perfect fit with the gear that is me. Why, thank you. No, you don't. But first, these friends need some attention. Pluto, could you come and look after her ill in the meantime? Run! The hell's going on? Why would the blue reverberation be here? No idea. Damn it, it looks like he's trying to kill us. If we screw this job up, we're gonna be banked up from all the bolts we wasted. The hell kind of bolts are you spending money on that are so expensive that like, that it li would literally bank, like, I don't understand. I, is this even, are my questions even relevant? Or am I just getting distracted by like, the pointless stuff? You literally just saw the blue, reverberation deflect our bullets 
We're no match for him in any way. Forget about anything else. We should run away and survive for now. We're almost to the exit. Hiya, friends. Who would have made such an who could have made such an adorable little request? I wonder. Ah, oh, hell! To the left. Ugh. Ugh. Ah, you're not getting anywhere with your sluggish feet, don't you see? Unless the lifeline were to come down from the heavens, that is. No. Damn it! Maybe we should drop our guns. Are you nuts? These are hella expensive. We're never or throwing them away. But we can't hide forever either. Louis, this is... What's that, an invitation? From the library or whatever. I heard that Hannah designated as an urban plague now. Ah, look at you, all clustered together in a corner. You're like a flock of cute little chicks gathered around in the cold. Blue reverberation, we apologize if we interrupted your business. We promised our Anything we've seen and heard here. So could you please, could you let us go? What? <laughs> okay, under one condition. Can you tell me who gave you this request? I'll give you 10 seconds. Nine. Gah, what else? They would do something about what that invitation thing. Six. Anyone got a pen? We need someone to sign the paper with. Ah, uh, you can. It's mine. Take your time now. Four. Crazy bastard. Quick, sign your names here. Three. Now, the real show is only beginning. Wouldn't you agree? But of course. Who's Skeleton Man? Pluto? At this point, he obviously let them away. He could have hacked and slashed them apart at any moment. He just... The fact that he handed them his pen! Yeah. Like, he could have... He could have had them, them dead at any time. He willingly let them away. For what purpose? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out later. The Blue Reverberation. That name sounds familiar to the Red Mist. You got that right. Both of them are top grade fixers that receive the color from the Hanna Association. They're a cut above grade one. It's curious that such a cable fixer showed up so early. There are lots of nut cases among, among fixers, but the blue reverberation is on a whole another level. He's a certified lunatic. Is he famous? Oh, he is. He certainly got skills, even if he's bonkers. He does appear to be skilled, seeing how he blocked those gunshots. That's why guns aren't used to him. They're not very effective against his actually competent opponents. As you mentioned it, the majority of guys didn't carry firearms. The other reason guns aren't used? It's the cost. They're awfully expensive. It's just not worth it most of the time. I don't get that logic. Why are guns so effective if they're so useless? Like, I know he just said that they're worthless against the truly competent opponents, meaning the most dangerous people would be immune to gunfire, like, like blue reverberance it's but it's like like so what just like uh, are guns mainly just used against like common great civilians or something or or general street vermin or whatever guns are pricey on their own but bullets are plain ridiculous it's like the like those poor folks said manufacturing bullets must be quite costly that's true, of course. The biggest factor, though, is the tax the head levied on fire on. Oh, taxes. It depends on the gun, but two full magazines with the bolts cost almost the same as a decent gun. Heck, giving your entire office crew augmentation procedures is probably cheaper than keeping enough bolts in stock for them to use. 
cost is so high and outweighs the benefit by a metric ton, and, and it's hard to find a workshop that treat that treats guns or bullets. What's more, workshops aren't even allowed to craft those without firearms manufacturing license. It's apparently very tricky to get. What do you think? What do you think? Th no, that's probably the perfect question. Like, I was about to ask, why the hell are guns so difficult to make? So difficult to get your hands on? Like, just, that's the best way to put it, Angela. What do you think is the reason firearms are made so inaccessible? This is just my hunch, but I think they don't want killings to happen too easily. Dude, we see people beat each other to death with their bare fists. That's just... Ugh. Without going into the whole topic of gun control, because that's its own issue that I don't want to bring into this, but all I'm going to say is, if someone is determined, determined enough to kill another person, they're going to find a way. It doesn't matter whether or not they have access to a gun. When you're determined enough to kill someone, not that you should be determined to kill someone unless it's like a, an extreme case of self-defense, but you know, if you're so determined to end a person's life, anything is going to be a weapon. That's that's all I gotta say about that for the most part. But anyway, killing what people in general? I don't quite expect. I didn't quite expect the rulers of the city to be humanitarians. Oh, not because the head to see value human life or anything. Obviously, it seems like they have this weird philosophy that the process of human killing another shouldn't be trivial, and insignificant. How funny. Death can be plain insignificant, even without guns. Well, you aren't wrong there. Phew, he's not following us all the way here. It's as if some un unnefficient person is toying with us. The blue reverberation seems like he knew everything. We should be thankful that we survived him somehow. <sighs> Don't get too nervous, Stefan. How could I not be nervous? We end up in the library we know almost nothing about. You know we're almost out of bullets, right? Ugh, what's even the point of running away from the blue reverb if we're going to die here anyway? Then we could at least try to die a bit later, obviously. Humans all die eventually. There's a little use in delaying the inevitable. See? He's got a point. Don't worry, I'll work it out. Greetings, dear guests. Hello, I'm Stefan, soon to be dead and shelled into your bookcases. You don't quite appear to be spirited, dear guests. It's only up to you whether you'll become a book or return triumphantly with the ones you need. Yeah, thanks for the kind words. You're ruining our mood. Don't mind him, we're in a bit of a hurry right now. We'll just take care of the business here and go back. I understand. Various guests visit here with their own reasons and purpose. There have been much more impolite guests, so please do not worry about your attitude. I'm getting a bad feeling about this lady. Seems just as eerie as the Blue Reverb. Maybe just dying to the Blue River was a better idea than this. Tweet, tweet, tweet. What are you, a parrot? Get inside already. Fine, hothead. May you find your book in this place. He's been rambling on so much that we haven't even gone to the gameplay yet. Alright, let's play with our new decks. Melee page icon. The more common type of when a melee page got clashes against the ranged page, the offensive dice cannot down to the ranged gun immediately even if it wants to clash against their offensive die. However, the melee die will be retained upon winning a clash and move to the end of the, the dice queue for reuse. Ranged pages will always be played before melee regardless of speed. Less common in combat pages that perform attacks at distance. The 
even if offensive die of a rank loses and clash against the offensive die of a minion, they user will not take no immediate damage. However, the opponent's its melee die will be retained in this case they move to the end of their dice game. That's why I put the zero pages in. I could still get away with using something.
putting different varieties in my deck gives me, lets me have like, gives me a variety of combinations for me to play with in the middle of the battle. Going to do that just in case at least one person doesn't clean this person up, the other will, and then I can spin. Try to do that. And of course, he gets sniped out of existence before he has a chance to do anything. Well, that works. in a full stop office. Let's close these curtains and call that a show. That Stefan fellow turned into a book just as he expected. It's kind of sorry to see him keep railing at the world till the end. Do you think it's wrong to blame the world? Oh no, nothing wrong with that. It's not like I think he was weak-willed, but for putting the blame on this world for his miseries. Just that I pity myself for living in that same world. I'm sorry that I keep trying not to. I'm sorry that I keep trying not to fault this world. I curse this world. Same, to be honest. Sometimes you're. Sometimes you're just better off worrying about the things you do have control over instead of spending time worrying about the things you don't control. Sometimes you're just better off worrying about the things that are within your control rather than trying wasting your time and energy be worrying about things that aren't in your control. Just do what you can that's within your control and try to work things out from there. Don't waste your time thinking I can't do A, B, or C and work instead think, think I can't do A, B, and C but I can do X, Y, and Z. 
just try to work from there. Oh wait. Let's get a... Is anyone worth keeping these books down here? Like... Still bothered by what he ha said? Of course I am. This might be our last performance ever if we go to the library. Just shake off all your worries with the exciting music. I guess. I guess. It's the moon who is the rabbit mascot on the right. Point if you keep. Getting distracted by petty concerns like that and half-assed your part, I'm gonna use you as my instrument. Second aid. You can't keep letting some little thoughts disturb our performance already. You guys are still new, who so you who have no idea of the troubles we that go through to perform back in my day. Me, Doodle Doo, Wolf, and Hee Haw before form this band devoted all of our time using so we, we can create this the beautiful oh beautiful performance we listened to on that fateful day is this some kind of weird pseudo cult all around the pianist is there something cuz or some kind of, of sh weird street gang it's like a cross between some kind of pseudo cult and a street gang what the hell so quit gawking and concentrate on the music. The piano's performance. Yes, I know. I left the Associates Section 3 and joined this band because I just couldn't forget that sweet melody. I wanted to make, make music like that myself, even if I had to give up everything I had. Yeah, remember the enchanting tune that echoed through the whole city. That grand and majestic piano made what a hundred thousand people the lovely sound created from each stroke of the tendons it made me realize how beautiful the sounds of a human can make in the hands of the right performer especially the ensemble with fixers at the, the finale at the end of that intense cause the fixers came he won with the piano and simulated into the music. Ugh. I don't want. Ugh. I don't want to think about like people's physical bodies being converted into a piano. Almost sounds like an SCP or something. I got SCPs were kind of partially inspiration. 
a partial inspiration for the original lobotomy preparation, so it's not that it shouldn't be that much of a surprise. It's still, ahem. Speaking as someone who, who watched the performance right at the scene, the finale was so wonderful. You know, musical score and notes literally unraveled before my eyes. The fixers ran across the score and charged at the pianist. They were buried under the notes one by one, their bodies blowing up. But they couldn't die there. They became part of the piano, spewing out fragrant notes. And the last fixer standing there was taken apart carefully, making the most splendid sound imaginable as gorgeous or scattered from their body. Yes, that performance, the heavenly thing that pierced me. Well, but then the black silence intervened and cut off the piano's hands and head. A total mood killer. I want to be part of that, that performance too. Ugh, I'm so jealous. I just had to sit in my office and listen to the music coming from a distance. Boo hoo, I want to do it too. I want to make music that's half as good as it is the pianist. But look at me, or how much I smash the ankle bones, pluck the tendon, and scrape flesh with blown to my instruments, I can't even get close to it. Please stop describing it like that. Uh, and hee haw and doodle do said things. No, oink, there's no need to be so impatient. It's true that we still have a long way to go before we can perform like that pianist did. But we're getting close. You see, we pour our heart and soul into our performance every day. We'll be able to make it one day. The performance by Doodle Doo, Hee Haw, and Wolf was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah, they gave, they gave a fantastic performance. They went on a trip to prepare for the next, but we won't get to hear it again for a while, though. It was. Will I get to perform like that someday? Of course. Let's discuss this again after we finish our, this performance and handle the library job Hee Haw gave us. She said there's going to be a performance that's bigger than ever. And we might get to find new instruments in the library, you know? Yeah. I'm excited to see the performance Hee Haw mentioned. Let me see. Aha! We're going to perform soon when I get excited. Oink like supermarkets, right? I'm in too. It's fun to mess around with all kinds of instruments in supermarkets. Thanks. Oh, thanks, Moo Moo. I'll practice harder. All right, gear up, everyone. These people are freaking freaks. Looks like the piano has left a whole bunch of nut jobs in its wake. From break and ruin, the most beautiful performance begins. What are you interested in? Listen, what are you listening? What? Oh, I'm sorry, that was Angel. What are you interested in listening to the piano's music? No way. Heard the kind of music more than enough times. There's another dotty musician like the pianist. I think I know why she's referring to <laughs> It's similar, but not exactly the same. How about you? Did you hear the pianist music yourself? Duh! Feel as it can to people and say that they didn't hear that damn sound. This music didn't just pierce me. I almost ravaged my whole being, and then Never mind. I don't want to remember that performance again. Anyway, musicians are all, uh, Molto, Vivant, that's in the head, one way or another. They seem to love performance that leads to doom, indeed. Guess they're living on their own world that no one else can understand. Cat goes, meow, meow. Pig goes, oinky, oink. Rabbit goes, squeak, squeak. This is so sad. <laughs> Greetings, dear guests. I am the direct... Moo Moo. Oh, wait, what? What? No! <laughs> ah, stop! I don't even know what the hell happened in the conversation! Well, that's gonna freaking fuck me. Why are they all getting it up on this guy?
give one strength to two random allies.
right. One, two, five. Until next time, I will see you guys around.